Okay. All right. Welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to be with you all today. Welcome back to some of you um, <laughs> who have been gone for eons, so it feels like. Um, I want to start today like this. Have you ever, um, how, how many of us, let's put it this way, how many of us realize that when you're looking for something, it's usually easier to find it? I know that sounds silly, right? If you're looking for something, now, if you're like me, when I put my coffee cup somewhere in this church, <laughs> but when I start walking around and I'm intentionally looking for it, I eventually find it, right? So it's that focus, it's that intentionality. And when you look for something, you can actually find it. The, the, the reality is the problem comes in when that actually happens on both sides of the coin. If you're looking for something physically, if you're looking for something emotionally, if you're looking for something spiritually, if you're looking for something, you can find it. But if you're also looking for something in a, in a negative way, you're going to find it, right? For, for instance, um, I have, I've had conversations with folks who, are, who have said things like, you know, um, I'm so unsettled, Pastor Wes. I just don't know what to do and... and the only thing I'm finding all, all around me in my job or in my marriage or at my church, I just, everything, everything's just wrong. Like, I just, I can't find anything good. My first question to that person usually is, well, are you looking for it? Because if you're looking for something negative, you're going to find it every time. Every time. And the, re, and the, the, the realness of it is that it's not hard to find negative things. It's not hard to find things that are, are down or bad or, I mean, just turn on the news or don't, <laughs> right? Just, just look at any advertisement out there. Watch any TV show today, and they have some sort of political undergirding trying to inform us through entertainment, right? It's, it's easy to find the negative things. Say amen. Is it easy to find the positive things? For some people, it is. Some people just have that, they're just honed in, and they can be thankful for a grain of rice. Like, but the reality is when we're, when we're focused on it, we can find it easier, whether, whether it be positive or negative. And so when it comes to being thankful, when it comes to being grateful, when it comes to um, having a, an attitude of gratitude, it's something that we have to intentionally focus on. We have to find reasons and things and ways to be grateful or to be happy or to be, uh, happy is the wrong word, to be grateful or to be thankful or to be appreciative, right? Uh, every now and then I'll get a text and I love it because I'm a words of affirmation guy. So like words... Words kind of like, woo, woo, you know, any little thank you or I appreciate you gets me going because, because like we said last week, a lot of the, the, the way that we say thank you is often related to the weight of what you're being appreciative of, or what you're being grateful for. And so even if, even the little bitty things, sometimes just a, a quick thank you in, in the Henry household goes a really long way uh, between me and Jen and, and the kids and mom and dad, and like, just a little thank you goes a very long way. And so, um, but when we're looking for that, it's easier to find it. Because how many of us know, and I'm sure we all know, it's sometimes really difficult to find the good stuff amidst all the bad stuff, amidst all the, all the terrible stuff, right? And so, <clears throat> um, the Apostle Paul um, understands this just as much as the rest of us do. Um, if not more so. The only person that suffered, I think, a little bit more than the Apostle Paul was Jesus himself. And they very much had the same type of, of walkings around on the earth where people were constantly trying to trap them uh, or, or find a way to, you know, make, see if they're breaking a law. Uh, Paul was put in prison multiple times. He was beaten multiple times. He was shipwrecked. He was hungry. He was starving. He did without, like, but, you know, in all of his journeys, um, Jesus was crucified. I mean, he had people looking for him all the, all the time. Think about this for just a second. Take the whole picture of Jesus and the Pharisees, and what were they doing? They were looking for the negative. They were really trying to find the negative in Christ just so, oh, look, that's blasphemy. We can get him. 
Oh, look, that's a lie. Oh, he called himself God. We should be able to get him now. But nobody touched him. When you look for the things that are negative, you're going to find them. Same is true with the positive stuff. When you are looking for the good to be grateful for, you're going to find it. You can find it. And so that was actually a challenge that Paul gave us in in Colossians. So let's turn to Colossians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 2 through 6 today. 2 through 6. And he's, now let me set this up for you. Paul is writing from prison. Now remember, when we went through our Ephesus study, prison actually meant he was in a home uh, that he got to choose, but he had constant supervision. He was always chained to another person. He was chained to a Roman officer, a Roman guard. So there were chains around his ankles, his, his wrists. He was constantly going, you know, wherever the guard had to go or wherever he had to go, the guard had to go and vice versa. He was never unsupervised. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty negative situation. I would not like to be chained to anyone all the time. And I love my bride. But even she gets tired of me sometimes. I was looking for the amen from the office. I know that's where she is. (laughs) I know she can hear me. (laughs) And so Paul was telling his his church like so he he loved philippians but he also had a very unique relationship with the people of colossae and he was telling them in chapter 4 listen i, I want to encourage you to pray but listen to this type of prayer listen to how he sets up this prayer verse 2 devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart pray for us too that God will give us opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I'm here in chains. Paul is telling us he's imprisoned. He's in chains. This is a negative situation. And what did he say to do? Pray with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Verse 4, pray that I will proclaim the message as clearly as I should, live wisely among those who are not believers, and make the most of every opportunity Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Devoting ourselves to prayer and thanksgiving, that is the challenge. Because there are times when our prayers come out more like, why God? And that's that's a negative focus. Because we're saying, why did this happen? Now, does that mean that it's always going to be that way and it's always going to be easy to get out of that or that we shouldn't go through that? Yeah, we're going to go through those things. Uh, and I'm going to put this caveat in there. If we don't have the, the ability to bring all of our emotion and all of our misunderstanding and all of our questions and things to God, in the moment he can't answer those or handle any of those, that means he's no longer God in our life. So it's okay to ask why. Don't stay there. Because that's the that when you're looking for the negative, it's easy to find. Paul here says, with an open mind, with an active mind, with devote yourself, looking around, being persistent, looking constantly. I'm gonna get into the Greek words here in just a second, and being grateful and being thankful. Always be on the lookout for the things that you can be thankful for. That's what Paul is setting us up here for. Uh, that's that's what he is saying. Now, the the Greek words. There's two Greek words in a in a about five word sentence that doesn't include and or uh or that or you know that kind of thing. Um, there's two words in this Greek sentence. So the the Greek reads like this. Let me read it to you first, and then <clears throat> and then we'll we'll get into it. In prayer, continue steadfastly, watching in it with all thanksgiving. That's how the Greek actually reads and. The, the breakdown of the words is there's like five words in there. Uh, the two that I want to point out is uh, prokatero, proskatero, sorry, P-R-O-S-K-A-R-T-E-R-E-O, proskatero, or something about an Oreo. I don't know. It's what it looks like on paper. So, But what it means is to attend to constantly. It means to be actively engaged. It, it means to watch with persistence. All of those three has this, this word has this connotation. To, to attend to constantly, to be actively engaged, or to watch 
persistently. That's what this word means. And so Paul says, in all devotion, continue in prayer. In all prayer, be watchful. Be watchful of what? He says, for the Eucharista. Eucharista is the next Greek word. E-U-C-H-A-R-I-S-T-I-A. Eucharista. And the word Eucharista is where we get the the current common word uh, of Eucharist, which is also known as communion. The Eucharist is also known as communion. So last week when we took communion, it was an action of thankfulness. It was, and that's what the word means. Thankfulness, gratitude in action, or using grateful language. Eucharista is, is all of those together. Now, watching attentively, the only way that I can describe how this is, is our, our, our seven-year-old puppy, Maddie. Maddie is super sweet. She wants to, she will run right up to you and she wants to be pet, you know, scratches and she just wants all of this stuff. Her nighttime routine, okay, Maddie, it's bedtime. She gets up from wherever she's sitting because when everybody's up, she's calm. She's, she's not active. She's not on guard because, you know, dad's awake, the alpha's awake, and so everything is fine. But when everybody goes to bed, one of Maddie's favorite places to sleep is at the top of the stairs where she can see everything. She, she perches herself at the top of the stairs. She can see the front door. She can see down the wings of the, of the stairwell. She can see dad's room and the boy's room and the guest room and the office. She can see it all. And she lays there like this. And she watches. And she's attentive. And she lets me know if something is not right. And it's very loud when she lets me know that something is not right in the middle of the night. Where's Maddie? You can always tell. She's right there at the top of the stairs. Now, there are times when everything's fine. The girls aren't, you know, the girls have, have one's in college and one's, one's living with, their, with her best friends. And, and, and so there are times when she realizes no one else is coming home. There's no one else going to be here. She gets up and she goes to lay in her bed. But only after she's watched in attentiveness for a while. She, she is the, so she's an English shepherd border collie. So she's constantly on the move constantly wanting to watch out. And Paul is challenging us very much to do the same thing when we pray. Be on the lookout. Keep your attention out there focused for things that are going to happen that you can then be thankful for. Be attentive with all thanksgiving. Be attentive with all gratefulness is really what Paul is saying. Look for the positive. Look for the ways that you can praise God and be grateful to God and and be thankful for what's going on. Because let's be honest, sometimes it's really hard to be thankful when things are just crummy. Or when they're terrible, it's hard to find that one or two little things to be thankful for and be like, God, I know we're going through all of this stuff, but I want to thank you for this. Because this is the thing that I, like, this is the one thing that I can be thankful for. And so I'm going to say it over and over and over and over again. I'm going to do this consistently. I'm going to be persistent with it. And so he's telling us to be on the watch all the time and be persistent about it. When, when we are persistent, we will then find, again, if you're looking for something negative, you're going to find it. And, and it's odd. You don't have to be very persistent to find the negative, right? It's pretty much just there. And when you find it, you know it, and then you end up speaking it. And then I throw myself under the bus. I grump about it. And I grump about it. And I grump about it. And then I'll bottle it up. And then later on, I'll grump about it again. Because it's easy to find some of those negative things. And so in persistence, what we need to do then is be looking for the Eucharista. We need to be looking for the reasons to be thankful. And again, this this word Eucharista, thankfulness, 
gratitude in action, but I love this part. Using a language of gratitude. Using a language of gratitude, right? This, this is the same word that we use for communion. And so when we talk about how Jesus gave his, his life and, and we are remembering what he did, what do we say? We say, thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken. Thank you for the blood that was shed that forgives my sins. Thank you, but, right? We're, but we're doing that. Not only are we, we actually taking communion, and today as we're going to eat our taco bar, woo taco bar, Today, as we're eating Taco Bar and, and talking about Jesus and being together, that's also a form of communion. It's communing together. It's, we are remembering everything that Christ has done for us, and we are being thankful in the moment. So today's challenge while we're eating lunch is find something to be thankful for and tell somebody else at the table. Let them know what it is because it's easy to find the negative stuff, but man, let's find the positive stuff. Let's find the things that make us thankful and grateful, right? Because the Eucharist is the act of being thankful and using grateful language. We're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to see that. So when we find it, then it's, it's our responsibility then to say it, right? To share it, to shout it, or to sing it, or Challenge to everybody who's listening, whether you're online or in the house. When we found something that's been good amongst all of the crap that's out there, how quick are you to actually share that good thing with somebody? Or is it, or is it honestly, is it, okay, God, well, at least I got one thing to be thankful for. Right? That's oftentimes how we feel. Okay, Lord. <laughs> At least I got one thing to be thankful for. No, send it to a text in somebody. The Bible says celebrate with those who celebrate, right? Rejoice with those who rejoice. It also says to mourn with those who mourn, but it says both sides. So when's the last time you got a text from somebody? When's the last time you sent Pastor West a text and said, hey, here's what, here's what went great. Here's what went well today. Here's what went great today. Here's what I'm thankful for today. I'll take it. I know most of you guys in this place have my cell phone number. <laughs> If you don't, I'll give it to you. Text me. Let some text your friends. Text your spouse. Let somebody know. Text your family. Text your church family. Let someone know what you're grateful for. Why? Because when we get that repetition of actually being grateful and speaking it out, the the um, uh, Proverbs says that uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Right, what is in here comes out of here, Jesus said. What, what's in your heart, what's in your spirit comes out of your mouth. And, and sometimes there's not enough persistence in finding the good things and finding the blessings and finding the things to be grateful for. So that's why Paul is challenging this church. He's challenging us, the church. He says, be attentive. Be constantly looking for reasons to thank God because you will find them. Be constantly looking for reasons to have a heart of gratitude, to have a, 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 a voice that speaks out the words, thank you, whether it be to God or to someone else. That's the type of, of challenge he's putting out here. And then all of that's followed up with the, with the, the next following verses. Verse 3, what can we be thankful for? Oh, and by the way, here's an example, Paul says. I want you to pray for us, too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. So not only is he saying, be attentive in prayer and look for the good things, pray for those good things. Pray for those opportunities. Pray that you'll actually see, ask God, show me, open my eyes, take all the other junk away and help open my eyes to what it is that I need to be praising you for and and open my mouth. I have to be honest with you. During the whole shutdown era, I didn't open my mouth enough to say thank you to God for what happened. I grumped and complained a lot. Now, you may not have heard it, but don't ask my wife. I, what comes, what, what's in here comes out of our mouth, and there are times when, when we have to then 
Lord, show me the opportunities. Like, put the good in front of me so that I can say thank you. Help me be grateful. Help me be thankful. It's easier said than done. Somebody say amen. It's easier said than done. But that's why Paul continues to put it in a challenge. This is his last thing that he's saying to the church after he has said, listen, Christ is supreme and he is the Lord and we are to trust in him alone. And then at the very end of that whole kind of wrapped up bow, he says, oh, and by the way, look for the reasons to thank God. Look for the opportunities to get out there and share and be grateful, to share the gospel message. And the, the, the hidden underlying challenge is, and this is where it hit hard for me, Don, if we ever stop being thankful for the death of Christ and his forgiveness and resurrection, then we're not going to find anything else. We can never stop being thankful for that. If there's nothing else that goes good in your day, at least with one breath, say, God, I thank you for Jesus and my salvation. I just gave you the one thing that you may need on really terrible days. If you've got nothing else to be thankful for, that we should be able to be thankful for. I want to wrap it up like this. Paul was chained. Right? He says, this is why I'm in chains. This is at the end of verse 3. And then he says, I'm going to come, I, I want to proclaim the message clearly. I want to live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Why would he say that? Why would Paul say, I want to live wisely around those who, who are, are unsaved? You, you, have, you have to remember the setting. He's chained to a Roman soldier who presumably is not a believer. And he could have gone all caring on them every time. He could have just gone completely crazy and complained to them the whole time and said, you know, this, it, it's, this is ridiculous. I just got to go to the bathroom. Can I go by myself? Right? He could have complained about every little thing during that time. He could have, he could have taken every opportunity. Let's, let's play this out for just a second. Paul's chained. He's supposed to be preaching the gospel, but he got put in put in this you know this this jail, uh, this this security. This, this and and instead of actually um, continuing to preach the gospel to whomever would come to him, or pray for whomever would come to him, or you know telling these stories for whoever would come to him. What if every time someone came, he would go, "Man, I can't believe that they're doing this to me. I'm a you know I'm a I'm a Roman citizen. I'm a Jew. Like this is ridiculous. This is nonsense." Oh, by the way, um, this Jesus guy. But you see, that's the reality that we live in today. As if we're looking for the negative, we'll find it. And it's so much easier to find than it is the positive. And so what we do is we're, we're getting into, well, this is so hard and this is going on and I don't like this and blah, 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 blah. And then somebody comes to you and says, hey, can you pray for me? And then all of a sudden you're just going to switch. Isn't that being kind of a double-minded person? Or at least, at, at least at the bare minimum, just not necessarily in control of the, the, the emotions that we are sharing with whomever we're sharing all the time. I mean, can you, can you imagine? Like, what if we're at a restaurant and you're just ripping on this, this you know, this poor waiter or waitress, and then you hear from God, hey, I needed you to pray for that person, and now they're not going to listen to you. Um, live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity and let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response. <laughs> That's heavy, y'all. Can we say that? Can we admit that? That's heavy because how many times have I? Because I'm the person who doesn't have an issue sending food back. I usually do it pretty graciously. But there are times when I get a little grumpish. I said no pickles, nerd. Like, you know, get a little grumpish. But then God goes, hey, that person, um, actually in this opportunity, I needed you to, to pray for that person. Or I needed you to ask that person how they were doing, and and plant the seed. And now we don't have that we don't have that opportunity anymore because we just covered it over with all of this other 
stuff, with all this other negativity, with all this other. And that's why Paul was the king of saying things along the lines of, be careful how you treat others, <laughs> right? Be, uh, I don't know if it's Colossians that he actually says this or if it was in, it's in one of his epistles. He says, um, don't think of yourself as better than you actually are. You're not that important. That's like a slap in the face scripture. But it keeps us in a mindset of saying or, or of thinking we have to be attentively seeking for things and ways and reasons to be grateful and thankful and then let our, let our lives and our speech be about that. I'll continue to say it. It's so much easier said than done. But it's something that we should strive for, something that we should work towards. It's, it's something that we, we don't get. Sometimes we don't get a second opportunity. So then we have to be ready when the first opportunity shows up. Amen? Paul shows us to be constantly watching for a reason to be grateful and then take that opportunity to put our words then into actions. We praise God. We share with others. We look for the good opportunities. We look for the good. Rinse and repeat daily. There's your prescription. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you that your word is truth and it's challenging and it, and it shows us, Lord, it challenges us, God, on how to walk through this life, how to be, how to live, how to love. So, Father, from my heart, forgive me for the times where I've missed the opportunity because all I've done was grump or complain or be selfish. Help me refocus away from the negative, away from all the garbage going on around me and, and, and causing me to complain or causing me to grump. Help us, help me. God, help me be the person who looks for the positive things, who looks for reasons to praise you, reasons to be grateful to you, reasons to say thank you. And not just during a thanksgiving season or a season of giving thanks, but God, every day of our life, every, every time we wake up and our feet hit the ground, God, help us, remind us to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son. Thank you for this breath. Thank you for the great things. And God, as your brother James says in, in, in James 1, thank you even for the challenges because those are opportunities for me to trust in you more. Those are opportunities for me to trust in you even more. So, Father, this morning, we say thank you. We give you glory and praise and honor. We love you. Thank you for the food that has been prepared and that we are about to consume. Lord, may it nourish our bodies and help our conversation be about you today and all days. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.